Well, brethren, this particular study was obviously uh, delivered to a group of ladies, it seems. But still, the principles apply equally to us men, so uh, don't be confused if I <laughs> would mention ladies and women a bit more. Thankfully, as far as we are concerned in the continued Church of God, we do have a group of very amazing and dedicated ladies, so I'm sure they will appreciate this and that they would understand that you know the emphasis on women or females is not really with any chauvinistic or sexist reasons, but it's just that the very lesson itself was on emotional maturity was addressed to women in particular. I guess there was a group of ladies, but you know it equally applies to all of us as well. So let's go through this interesting topic. So let's begin this study by describing first the general characteristics of emotional immaturity. And I'm sure that <laughs> all of us can certainly recognize some of our traits in this. Well, the signs, here are the signs of emotional immaturity. Being moody and depressed too much of the time. Crying, pouting, losing temper and screaming over trivial matters. Being late for appointments or allowing pleasures to get in the way of work responsibilities or school assignments. Staying up too late at night when you should be getting your rest. Then sleeping in too late for <laughs> classes or work. Staying in bed and calling in sick when you feel a little tired or down rather than disciplining yourself and putting your responsibilities first. Getting mad if you aren't the center of attention and the most popular girl around, or we can say guy around, or getting irritated and insolent when you don't get your way. Being demanding of other people and feeling that they should cater to your desires and needs first. Buying on impulse, failing to consider the price or whether you have the resources. Failing to say no to yourself. Giving in to your desires and wants without restraint, disregarding the consequences. Failing to reason out the situation or problem from beginning to end before making a decision, acting first and thinking later. Being easily influenced by others instead of using your mind and making your own decisions. Daydreaming, wasting your time in a world of fantasy and make-believe instead of thinking constructively. Reacting emotionally and falling apart in an emergency. Failing to collect your wits and act with a clear thinking head after the initial blow had passed. Finding fault with everything and everybody instead of trying to get along with people. In other words, being generally negative and critical toward life. Using the excuse that since you are a woman and therefore more emotional, especially at certain times of the month, you don't have to keep your emotions in tow. Failing to take the blame or being too stubborn to admit it when you're wrong. Feeling inadequate and easily discouraged, particularly when associating with peers who are self-assured, multi-talented and successful. Now, there are other general manifestations like shyness, loner type, fearful of taking new steps, impetuous, self-indulgent, insensitive and inconsiderate, whines, complains and cries easily, overly concerned with your health, Moody, changeable, unstable, easily offended, accusing, competitive, win or else, always have to be the first. Well, there are some other also signs like argumentative and intolerant, impatient, everything must be now, never later, ahora mismo, as they say in Spanish, sarcastical and cynical, unable to be serious and level-headed, disorganized, unable to concentrate, irresponsible and undependable. Now those are the signs. Now what emotion is we need to understand as God's people and why you act and react the way you do. Well brethren, emotion is the energy which makes the mind work. It supplies the energy for survival. Now you know emotions both physical and mental are necessary for life and stimulate us to behave in a certain way. In that sense, we are all emotional people indeed. But there is a difference, however, between emotional maturity and immaturity. The difference lies in whether you let this energy, emotion, rule you to your own hurt and the hurt of others, or whether you, through careful thought, put it to use constructively. Now, you can't stop the energy that is emotion, but you can control and direct it into constructive channels. So, how to control emotion? Well, 
we can have like four let's say broad principles of controlling our emotions first realize there are negative and positive ways to react to an impulse that comes into your mind second understand that you have been programmed from infancy to react the way you presently do then third realize further you can develop the ability to choose the way you want to react rather than allowing it to be automatic in other words you can reprogram your behavior and finally here is a quote from the book discovering ourselves from authors Edward Strecker and Kenneth Appel and this is the quote from their book how this process works quote says once the lever has been pulled the water that is emotion rushes on inevitably there are however several channels into which the stream may be diverted labeled brave fairly brave cowardly stupid smart immature and the individual has the power to direct the stream so that even though he cannot stem the tide he can cause it to flow in the channel of his choice end of the quote now we also need to understand and consider causes of negative responses or emotional immaturity so basically there are you might say uh let's say about three three broad causes one is conditioning Second is modeling, and third is cognitive development. Now, those are the, you know, basically three factors that contribute to emotional maturity. Conditioning, you know, this involves how you were treated as a little girl, as well as what was expected of you. If you were treated as a fragile, timid doll, rather than as a child, and that kind of behavior was reinforced with approval, either verbal or nonverbal, you probably carried this pattern into adulthood. As a female, you undoubtedly were expected to cry easily, to pout, think superficially and selfishly. You also learned to tell white lies to manipulate your parents and men. Now, this background probably contributed to your present makeup as an adult. The second cause is modeling. You know, children are imitators, you know. Adults are your mirror and especially your parents or parent figures. So whatever the model of the person you identified with as a child, your mother, school teacher, Hollywood star, etc., you will in some way become like that person. And the third cause is cognitive development. Well, this is the process by which you determined that certain behavior was or was not to your advantage. Crying, you know, sulking or throwing tantrums to get your own way became a lifelong manipulative device. It is called water power or the silent treatment. These are negative techniques immature women have learned to use to get their desired results. Now, of course, as you, as we all understand, there are as many different techniques in childhood that go into creating this manipulative phenomena as there are individual families. And these factors that we just mentioned, conditioning, modeling, cognitive development, are just meant to give a general basis. So too much pampering on one side of the pendulum and neglect on the other will net the same results. An over-pampered child will learn to expect too much from others without ever giving, and neglect neglecting children, on the other hand, can grow up harboring such deep-seated anger and resentment that they become demanding and inconsiderate. An over-pampered and protected child develops a self-indulgent attitude that prevents him from coping with the frustrations and realities of his future life. On the other hand, a neglected child often has to learn to solve his own problems and can develop attitudes of independence and so to speak, omnipotence. Now, you who are parents and have children, of course, you wonder what you as a potential parent or a parent can do to teach your children emotional maturity and self-control. Well, there are, again, several broad principles. We have 10 those principles. One is to teach your children at a very early age that they cannot have their own way by pouting, crying, or displaying other selfish emotional outbursts. You know, children starting out young will try temper tantrums to get what they want. Secondly, don't allow them to be selfish. You know, teach them they cannot always be first or have their way. Help them to learn to give in at times and let others have a chance. Now, teach also your child self-restraint. To allow a child to uncontrollably vent his anger instills in him an attitude of self-will, which leads to overt rebellion and hostility later in life. Teach your child also to handle his emotions or her emotions. Example from the parent can do a lot here, you see. 
because emotions by themselves are not wrong. And sometimes, of course, brethren, we try to kind of uh, be very hypocritical as an adult. And we try to pretend to be saints and try to pretend as if we are all the half uh, or one with one, one foot into the kingdom of God. Brethren, we are not. We all have emotions which are wrong or can be right or wrong. And our children also have those emotions, you know. And sometimes, you know, children in the church of God have always pointed out how hypocritical their parents are and other church members because they pretend to be so saintly when they're in the church, but in the same time in, in, in real life, so to speak, when they're outside of the church, they display all these emotions, but yet they tell their children those emotions they should not have. Well, look, emotions by themselves are not wrong. We all feel anger, hurt, love, lust, and so on. So because it's natural to us, so we're human beings, that's natural to our children as well. So what is wrong is failing to control those emotions, okay? So you want a child who can express his or her emotions, but you don't want a child who cannot control his life. For example, the child who is angry when a friend wants one of his toys, you know, normally a child will strike out, hit, scream, bite, or use violence to get his toy back. The child who is not taught from the beginning to control these emotions will very possibly become the adult who uses a knife or gun out of anger to get what he wants. The child who is selfish, who grows up thinking the world owes him a living, becomes the adult who will rob a bank because he is unwilling to work for what he gets but feels he deserves the money and takes what he wants. So again, we all have emotions, our children as well, and they can feel just like we do anger, hurt, love, lust. We cannot pretend that we don't have those, brother. Don't pretend that we have already made it. You know, tell our children we are fighting with God's help against those. And that we are asking God, you know, to control those emotions. And we need to train them in the same way to control those emotions. Emotions are very natural things for all of us. Then one of those princi principles, the fifth one, will be teach your children how to work. You know, don't wait on them hand and foot. Often parents will do this unthinkingly. Because out of love, they place their children on a pedestal from which they never come down. And thus the children are unrealistic about, about life. And they expect the outside world to treat them as their parents have. Teach your children responsibility. And I've been trying in these Gentile nations to tell, you know, often parents that it'll be very good to have a pet. And let children play with pet and do some responsible things about pet like feeding feeding a pet, cleaning after a pet, and so on, because that teaches them responsibility and teaches them to give, you know, service to others, to another living being. But you can give them other jobs, you know, to do, and encourage your child to finish what he starts or she starts. Be sure he carries through with his work at home or school and other projects such as music lessons, etc., etc. Allow your child to do the job himself. Because, of course, you'll be tempted to do it yourself. Because, you know, it's easier sometimes if for mom to do the job rather than take the time to teach the child how to do it. And sadly, we can tell you from this area here where I live, the impatience of mothers in particular, who should be teaching their children, both male and female, to do some simple things in the kitchen. You know, we have generations of men who grew up in this country which is not the case in the Anglo-Saxon world, I've seen it, but we have got a generation of men in particular, and now we are having generations of, of ladies in particular, who just are growing up not knowing how to cook or, or, or make a simple meal. Some of them don't even know how to make scrambled eggs, brother. That's terrible. But that's how it is. You know, oh, mom will do it. Grandma will do it. You know, oh, don't... Well, oh, let, let's not torment the children, you know, let, let, let us spare them from any hardship. So you have, you have generations of unable, unable, disabled men and women who would probably starve to death if there was no supermarkets with half-made food to buy. Brethren, that's terrible. We need to teach our children, you know, and allow them to do jobs themselves. You know, it requires much time and understand and patience for a child to learn. He's, of course, slower and he's often messier. But if he doesn't try, he won't learn. And that allows us to, that leads us to another principle. Allow your child to make mistakes. 
Because a child who has never made mistakes is the child who has never tried. And after all, how do we all learn? Well, we try, we make mistakes. Next time we make less mistake. Next time we must make even less mistake. And then over time, we master a certain skill. Let your child start making decisions. Oh, how about that? Because you know, you as a parent must guide the decisions he or she makes, but you need to help him or her build up his confidence in his ability to think for himself. And after all, the time will come when he will be on his own with nobody to make his decisions for him. Often a person who is immature, he has never had an opportunity to think for himself. You know, example, a young woman reared in this type of atmosphere will rely too heavily on her husband to make all, all her decisions just as she leaned on her parents before. And you know, during courtship, this may make a man feel good knowing his girl needs him, needs him under quotation mark. But after marriage, when he's burdened down with every little decision and cannot rely on his wife to handle the things that come up every day, he will find that she is not really a help meet, you know. And finally, the principle is give your children praise and encouragement. Now, this kind of attention builds up their confidence and self-esteem and will motivate them to achieve higher levels of success. Now, of course, the word of caution is always done over compliments so as to avoid building vanity and conceit into their personalities. And after having said that, if we ever grow in number and have an opportunity, Brandon, at the feast to have a children's choir perform special music for us, I, as an elder, expect from all of you, based on God's principles, a rousing and hearty applause. It's one of the, my, my most dramatic experience in the Church of God. In one particular country, when they were, you know, children performed very lovely music and there was deafening silence in the congregation. That is so tragic. Let us not, if we ever allow ourselves to do something like that, if it happens, then you can count that we have failed before God as his servants. Now here helps in becoming more mature, helps that we all need. You know, one help is start by examining yourself. Another one is, you know, specific things to do. Okay, start by examining yourself. So a good place to begin is to isolate your emotional hang-ups and become totally familiar with yourself. When you discover problems in your life that, of course, contribute to unwanted behavior, go to work on them. You know, when you become emotional, ask yourself why you feel as you do. Be, be aware of those low days and discipline yourself. There are definite reasons why your emotions are getting out of hand. Seek to understand why. You know, don't be satisfied with saying, well, it's just, it's just, I'm just that way, or my mother was like that, or it runs in the family. You know, God expects us all to improve, change, and grow. And remember that coming to understand yourself gives peace of mind, eliminates stress, and imparts inner strength. So learn to identify your true feelings and call them what they are. You know, anger, resentment, jealousy, hatred, etc. Again, we all have feelings. And so do our children as well. And, you know, don't be afraid or ashamed to examine your feelings. If they're wrong, ask God's forgiveness and ferret out the cause. You know, this requires work indeed. Deal with your problems from God's point of view rather than from human instincts and feelings only. You know, most women, for example, when asked why they feel a certain way, they will answer, I don't know. Well, you know, remember, cause is important. Be willing to change and work on your problems and growth will come. Now, speci specific things to do in becoming more mature. Well, grow in confidence and self-esteem, you know. So often emotional reactions result from a woman's feeling of inadequacy, physically, socially and professionally. That is, you know, the question is, is she attractive? Is she accepted by the important people in her life? Does she feel like a misfit around her co-workers? For example, you've got, you know, you've got up in the morning and started to get ready for work. Your hair just won't do what you want it to and you feel lousy in what you're wearing. It seems like nothing goes right the whole day. You're given an important assignment to do at work, but you fall apart emotionally because you started out the day lacking confidence and from then on things just keep getting worse. Another thing to help us grow in more mature way, both male and female, is learn to discipline yourself. 
When confronted with some form of self-doubt, the mature woman contains her emotions and calmly devises a plan to deal with them. When questioning for her appearance, popularity and professional competency, rather than explode, she should consider those who excel in these areas and take pointers from them. Overcome self-consciousness. You know, force yourself to talk to others, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable. Find out about their lives and be responsive to the things they're interested in. You know, take the initiative, even though it's painful, until you form a habit of meeting people. So accept invitations to do new things instead of finding excuses to avoid them. Remember, action conquers fear. Inaction prolongs it. And I'm reminded of the scripture which says, perfect love casts out all fear. Overcome self-centeredness, you know, show concern and consideration for others. Specific ways you can do this is like, you know, if you're going shopping, for example, offer to pick up items that somebody else may need. Keep in touch with, with, with family, you know, build time in your schedule for other people by learning to listen and encourage. There are some kind of perhaps volunteer activities, perhaps some club projects so you can get involved in a common goal with others. Eliminate self-pity. Oh, this is very important. Self-pity. We all have tendency, brethren, to go into self-pity. And some people say that Job was suffering from that. Other than from only from self-righteousness, he had self-pity. Well, I cannot blame him in a sense because the physical trial he was going through was really so horrendous that it's, it's beyond my imagination. But eliminate self-pity. I mean, we're not even close to Job. And remember the scripture in, 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 um, in the book of uh, Hebrews which says that we have not yet come to blood in resisting sin, brethren. So yes, we can wallow in self-pity and, and, and say, oh, poor me because of this, that, and the other. But, you know, the scripture still says that we have not come to the blood yet, or to the shedding of the blood in resisting sin. So, you know, recognize the problem and realize you have to reprogram your mind. When, you, when your feelings have been hurt, Ask yourself the following questions. How important is this really? What did I do to cause this? How am I to blame? You know, see things from the other's viewpoint and give him or her the benefit of the doubt. Don't harbor resentments, you know, talk things out because negative feelings, resentment and tension can actually cause ill health. So try to be more understanding, tolerant and forgiving of others and you will build happiness in your, into your life. Don't blame others for your mistakes. Another principle to help us becoming more mature is learn to be a good loser. Oh, that seems so contradictory to what all of our societies foster us to be competitive, winners. Well, brethren, sometimes we have to lose. And being true Christians, we are reminded of the scripture which says that all those who want to truly follow Christ will be what? Will be terribly successful and rich and so socially acceptable and successful. No, brethren. We'll be persecuted. That's what it says. And I'm experiencing, I'm experiencing that these days because all of my recorded messages, both in Serbian and English, are being censored by Facebook. Facebook just removes them, you know, because they're obviously bothered by me witnessing to people about the pagan nature of the these winter holidays and uh, they obviously don't want people to you know become and hear the message about emotional maturity and so on so they basically remove every link i put to those recordings interesting so but what am i to do am i going to whine to you and cry to you? no brother no i will not give up we need to learn to be a good loser you know we need to develop an attitude of having fun instead of being overly concerned with whining so I'll be having fun with Facebook, trying to kind of find ways to <laughs> get those messages across. You know, we need to also learn to congratulate and praise others when they win. You know, that's being a good loser. When they win, why shouldn't we not praise them? We are not perfect and uh, we can lose sometimes. We cannot always win. We need to teach our children the same thing. They cannot always win, brethren, because they're going to be influenced by this horrible society around us competitive you know society and then society teaching them all kinds of perversions in sexual sphere we need to counter that society we cannot let our children be just uh, given over to the state public school systems and just think that everything will be great and wonderful let 
let the public school system teach them. No, brethren, they need to see biblical principles first and foremost in us. They need to see that we struggle. Yes, they will see that we are imperfect. We cannot hide that from them. But they need to see that we are, you know, we are striving to be perfect. And we are giving them straight, you know, uh, straightforward instructions from the Bible. And then later as they grow up, they'll just make their own decision. But, you know, we need to teach them also to be good losers. Don't be flippant and scatterbrained or absent-minded if you wish. You know, meet problems and obstacles as they arise. Take time to think things out. Learn to react slower after you have had time to plan a course of action. You know, get your own wine and gear and make it produce. Don't procrastinate. Get organized. Jot things down. Map out plans to solve problems. Set definite goals. Schedule your time instead of wasting it. You know, set priorities. Learn to say no. That's the hardest thing in this culture in which I grew up. Saying no to anybody is almost a crime. How can you know? Because you're supposed to be taking you know, everybody's wishes and anybody's desires. You're supposed to be uh, uh, with open arms. You're supposed to accept them and, and, and fulfill them, brethren. And then when people don't want to do it, then what they do, they resort to lying. You know, They resort to lies. We all need to learn how to say no. And you know, we need to think 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 for your ladies you can select a mature female model you have one described in proverbs 31 now of course for us men it will be most the most blessed situation to have to have a lady who's proverbs 31 but it seems as we grow to the end go to the end of this age people are less and less willing to be both you know males and females to sacrifice for themselves the other day in the bakery a lady came in and she was complaining to the baker, who is, by the way, my good friend, how uh, the only the only job offer was to take care of an elderly lady and kind of uh, have the daycare. And then, but she was kind of unwilling to do that because you know older people can be sometimes very complicated and stuff. So this friend of mine, the baker who sells at the bakery, he says, "Well, then you know, then don't have any money, you know." Whoa. And then he asked me. He turns to me and asks. What do you think? I said, I said, fine, you know, let them starve to death those who don't want to work. But I said, you know what, you know, I see in our culture that people just would love to just uh, not do anything. And yet they want everything, you know, they want all kinds of luxuries and stuff, but they would just love to get it for by not doing anything about it. And then I added something that is very important for all of us brethren to understand and remember. And I added, you know what I said? I said, uh, I've realized, you know, for success. Not only work is needed, but something else that has vanished from our vocabulary as a nation. And it's called sacrifice. When was the last time you heard sacrifice? Sacrifice for a higher goal, sacrifice for this, that, and the other. We don't hear it anymore in our vocabularies around the world. But success needs and demands sacrifice. And so does serving other people. So does serving God after all, you know. So having this Proverb 31 model woman, you know, with this age of ease and, and loud is and dominant attitude, I'm, you know, it's really a great blessing if somebody has a wife who is of that, of that character. But for you ladies, you know, select a mature female model, such as one described in Proverbs 31. You know, study others whom you consider a pod example of maturity. Observe how they make decisions and conduct themselves. You know, make friends with serious-minded, God-fearing people. Of both sexes, of course. Learn to think before you verbalize your feelings. You know, the idea of counting to ten before getting angry is not such a bad one, if you think about it. Because sometimes, you know, we need a few moments to get our emotions in control before we say or do anything. And remember the scriptures on building bridling that is the tongue scriptures in james such a small organ and what does it do <laughs> it can make forests burn just like the horrible fires we have seen in australia this year well that's exactly what a tongue human tongue can do you know so remember those scriptures on bridling the tongue often if you had thought first many things would be left unsaid and learning to think before you act or speak provides another benefit. It teaches you to make quick decisions and reason rationally. Now also learn to be flexible. 
you know, that's another help in becoming more mature. Ask yourself, how can I get the results I want in a more constructive and uplifting way? And there are always alternatives. You know, break out of old patterns and the shop-worn ways you have always done things. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask someone who is a close friend to work with you and remind you when you are slipping into old unwanted habits. And for those naughtier problems, so to speak, seek counseling from someone you respect, trust and who is qualified. Now also take control of your life and learn to be tolerant of others. You know, don't think in terms of whining or losing in a conf winning or losing. Well, whining also, but don't think in terms of winning or losing in a confrontation. That is what a child does. Now, look for points to agree with others instead of voicing your differences. Teach yourself tolerance. Accept human differences and limitations. Not all people are the same. Some people have incredible limitations. I'm right, way, right now facing with one of those limitations, which are strange to me because I'm kind of outspoken and and kind of extrovert, but uh, you know, I have to deal with uh, with a person whom God has called, who has a good level of spiritual understanding. But you know, it's an introverted character, shyness, a fear to you know communicate verbally and so on. So you know, it does take indeed uh, time and patience, and I keep praying to God to you know lead that person to overcome that because he needs to, he has to. Uh, there is no way that somebody can be counseled for baptism, for example, and baptize if <laughs> if you just type out messages and never speak to such a person. And let alone that we have to meet in person one these days. So uh, teach yourself tolerance. You know, I accept, however, that you know his his life experience might be who knows uh, what it is and uh, who knows what consequences there might be. So you know, we need to be patient as well, all of us. But we need to accept human differences and limitations and learn patience. We need to realize it takes time for human beings to see themselves. So be adaptable and willing to change. You know, learn to give in to others and not insist on your own way. Think self-control and seek the best results. And pray about it and God will of course help you. Now what does it mean to be emotionally mature? Well, a simple definition of mature is having completed natural growth. A mature woman will display certain characteristics that are a joy to experience. Now another definition is the art of living in peace with that which we cannot change, the courage to change the, that which should be changed, and the wisdom to know the difference. And you might realize, as I have said that, there is now little plates being sold at least here in uh, this town where I live, and I purchased it in a Chinese shop, believe it or not, with this motto, you know, please, dear God, help me, you know, to uh, help me to live in peace with that which I cannot change, you know, give me the courage to change what I, what I should change, what I can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. So summary of characteristics that describe an emotionally mature woman, and men, of course, is composed, reserved, purposeful, has sense of values, goals defined, able to cope with crisis, cultured and refined, able to control anger and settle differences, patient, determined, capable of facing unpleasantness and frustration, humble, joyful and happy, compassionate. I've just enumerated 14 characteristics, 2 times 7. Now how to attain emotional maturity? Well, in all relationships, Think of your emotional reactions and how you will affect other people. This behavior must be learned and developed. You see, we are not born with it, brethren. None of us is. It is a change of attitude from a state of taking to a state of giving and sharing. It comes through godly knowledge, creative thinking, right decisions, and strong self-discipline. Emotional maturity does not crucify or anesthetize emotions. It guides and controls them with right knowledge and true wisdom. Also plan now to grow in emotional maturity. You know, determine, determine the weak areas you need to overcome. Set goals and guidelines. Establish checkpoints for re-evaluation along the way. Don't be discouraged if you occasionally slip and make mistakes because you need to concentrate on the things you do right and the many times you succeeded in mastering a situation. 
and this will help you to gain confidence, pick up momentum, and eventually reach the fulfillment of your goals. So, brethren, in summary, we can say that in essence, emotional maturity can be summed up in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Famous chapter, of course, as you know, is the love chapter, and uh, we'll read now from verses 4 through 7. I'm reading from the Living Bible Version, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him, no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. Well, that's what the Bible teaches us. So, emotional maturity is learning to develop love to its fullest extent so that it becomes our chosen response. You know, the automatic channel into which we divert the stream of all other human emotions now i will so for the end i want to learn to you i want to read to you the following paragraph and uh, it is uh, it is a comment from two prominent psychiatrists glaser and harrington they did a study of patients in a mental hospital and came up with the following opinion here is the opinion there is no such thing as mental illness these people who have mastered the art of irresponsibility, these are people who have mastered the art of irresponsibility, those who claim to have mental illness, they pass the buck to other people. There is a moment when they have an opportunity to, to choose their course of behavior. Some people are childlike, never having grown up. They must be taught to assume responsibility for their own behavior. When they start a tantrum, Command them, stop that, you're acting crazy. And then, as the final comment from those two, it says, over 70% of the patients treated by Glaser and Harrington were able to be released from the mental hospital and return to a normal life within 17 months of treatment. They had been conditioned to assume responsibility for their own actions and reactions.